All right, good morning. Thank you for coming to church today. We're getting our online broadcast up and running. So this is uh, church, amen. And we're glad that you're here today to worship with us. Let's stand together and let's just invite the presence yes. of the Lord into this Thank house this Jesus. morning, can we? God, Come on, lift your voice up and praise God, him. God, Heavenly Lord, Father, Jesus. we love you, we glorify you. God, Lord God, we just ask that you have your way today, all that we say and all that we do. We love you, we glorify you, we praise your holy name today. Speak to our hearts today. Have your way, sweep over our souls. Open the windows of heaven today and pour out blessings. Heavenly Father, we love you, we adore you, we glorify you, we praise your master's name today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together and praise him. He's worthy. Jesus, Come on now. Let's praise him today. He's worthy.
our King Supreme. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put your hands together and magnify God right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for coming to the 1030 service. You may be seated. Thank you for the help on the music. Amen. And uh, I'm going to get right into the message this morning uh, for today, what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart. And uh, uh, it, the title of it is simply going to be called Change. Uh, as we are regathering today for the first time in person in 12 weeks, we can see that there have been changes, no doubt. Changes in schools and colleges, changes at the workplace, changes at church. We are uh, in 12 weeks time at a completely different look, a completely different uh, atmosphere. And even as you look around today in this building, there's a lot of change that has occurred because of COVID-19, because of the coronavirus. And you know, life in general changes, right? For us that have lived life four or five or six or seven decades, we know that life is continually a season of change, that things are not the same as they were. And even for young people, uh, there are passages of time when your life changes. You go from elementary school to middle school. You go from middle school to high school. You go from high school to college and from college to a career. And so we see that life is full of changes, right? It's not consistent and constant. Things change. And we uh, can adapt uh, to these changes or they can come at us and uh, overwhelm us and override us. And uh, uh, so uh, I, I just want us to know today that we are acknowledging change and we are going to phase this thing back in incrementally. And it won't always look this way. Trust me, it won't always feel this way. But uh, we are definitely looking and feeling different than what we did when we last gathered in person on March uh, 15, I believe it was, the last Sunday that we were here on a Sunday morning. And even within the change, there's change because we had 50 people signed up for the 1030 service and we cut it off at that. But some folks are on vacation this week. Some folks still are making a choice not to come but wanted to reserve their seat for 1030. And that's fine. And in the midst of all this, I think the best thing that we can do, amen, is... Uh, forbear one another, right? And be understanding and long-suffering and not try to bottle people in or constrain them into the same kind of a, a mindset that we are. Let's be, I guess what I'm trying to say, let's be flexible, amen, with each other. Let's support each other and love one another and, and understand, and I'm going to proclaim it right now, that this is a temporary change, amen. Now, I will say this on the other side of it, that some things going forward may permanently have changed in our lives. But the temporary is what I'm talking about is that, amen, life is but a vapor. We're here anyway for just a season of time, and then we are going to change, amen? The Bible said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I or we shall be changed, amen? The great change that is coming is when this mortal shall put on immortality and this corruption should put on incorruption. Amen. That's the greatest change that we're all looking and longing for. And that's to be with Jesus Christ forever and eternity. Amen. And so there is a great change coming for all of us when, amen, the Bible talks about this house, this body shall be dissolved and this tabernacle shall wither away. Amen. And so... The great change that is yet to come and to occur in our life is that when we are with him forever and ever. And I tell you what, uh, the past 12 weeks, uh, it makes me want to be with Jesus, uh, not ahead of time. I don't, <laughs> you know, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die to get there. But amen. I don't mind knowing that heaven is my final destination today and that I'm going to be with him. And I'm confident in that today. I will also say it's nice to preach to live people this morning. Amen. Uh, sitting in pews instead of posters and screens. And, and I'm sure my wife and some of those have been helping with the music. It was nice to uh, be able to sing with folks in the audience. The first 
The first uh, six or eight weeks, Sister Lori and me was here by herself, and Brother Bob Kwam was it. And we were doing everything, and it got to be stressful and taxing. And then when, when uh, uh, May rolled in, we loosened up a little bit and started getting recruiting some help because we were at our wit's end. But this morning I want to read, uh, and, and, and we're on time schedules here, and that's why we're not doing announcements and, and why we're not doing a whole lot. We're going to pray. We're going to sing a couple songs and get the preacher on the floor at 1045, and they need to be done at 1110, 1115 and get you out the doors. Uh, and this is the way it's going to work. 1145 would be the same thing. A couple of songs, and then at noon the preacher will get on the floor, and we'll be done by 1230, just trying to keep things moving. But I am going to share some thoughts with you this morning about change. And from Psalms 102.24, the writer said this, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old thou hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. A vesture shalt thou change them, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But here's what I want us to focus in in the midst of all this change. And again, whether it's COVID-19, coronavirus, or whether it's just life in general, here's the takeaway from this. Verse 27, speaking of God, thou art the same. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's the same today. Amen. He is the same, and thy years shall have no end. Amen. The writer is saying here that speaking of the heavens and the earth, speaking of everything that we see in the natural eye, he is saying that they are going to wax old, that they are going to perish. He said, and even as a garment, uh, as a garment waxes old, and as a garment you fold it up and you put it away. Maybe it's your winter sweater. Maybe it's your favorite hoodie. And at some point in time, your garments, they wax old and you fold them up. You give them to the Goodwill. You have the yard sale. You, get, you move on. And he said, this is what's going to happen to all of the creation that you have made. That they are going to wax old and, and you're going to do away with them like a garment. You're going to put them up. Amen. But in the midst of all that change, and who knows uh, uh, who, who agrees and who knows with me this morning that we've seen how our earth physically is changing and weather patterns and things. We're seeing this change occurring. Amen. But in the midst of everything, the one that said, let there be light. Amen. He has not changed at all today. The one that said, amen, let the greater light rule by day and the lesser light rule by night. He has not changed one iota this morning. Amen. And no matter what changes you've encountered because of COVID-19, amen, God is still the same today. Amen. I'm glad to know that he is the same and he will never change. He will never fail. Amen. And he has no end. He said, I'm the alpha, I'm the omega, I'm the beginning, I'm the end, I'm the first, I'm the last. He said, I am God and beside me there is no other. Amen. And I want to tell you today, we can put our hope in Jesus Christ today because he never changes. Put your hands together and magnify the Lord with me. He never changes. He never changes this morning. Amen. I want to talk to you real quick this morning about four changes of garment. Four changes of garment since David said, amen, that the earth is waxing old like a garment. Amen. I want to talk to you about four times, uh, 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 four garments in scripture. I'm going to fly through these this morning. But in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 12 and 20, uh, the backstory is, is that David committed adultery with Bathsheba and a child was uh, conceived of that sinful affair. The Bible lets us to know that God, through the prophet, told David that the child would not live. David lays on the ground for seven days. He is fasting. He will not eat. He does not bathe. He does not shower. He is pleading and begging with God to spare the life of the baby that has now been born. But God had made up his mind, and you can talk to God about that when you get to heaven. That's his business. I'm just sharing to you what happened as a consequence of a man's sin. He laid on the earth, and he pleaded. He would not eat. 
He begged God for that baby to live. It was God's decision. Who is a sovereign God to take that child to be with him? The Bible said that when the servants were whispering in the background that that baby had passed. In 2 Samuel 12 and 20, the Bible said David arose from the earth. He washed himself for the first time in a week. He put anointing oil on his head. Amen. He shaved his beard. And the most important thing that you need to know is that he changed his apparel. Amen. He was in sackcloth and ashes. He was in the apparel of mourning. He was in the apparel of death. He was in the apparel of fasting and sacrifice. But when God's will was accomplished, amen, David got up and he took off the robe of mourning. He took off the apparel of death. He took away, amen, everything that associated with him with defeat and sin. And he said, oh, come on, somebody needs to hear me this morning. And he said, I'm going to change my apparel. I'm going to change the way I look at things. I'm going to change the outlook on life because God is sovereign and his will has been accomplished in my life. The Bible said he changed his apparel and he went to the house of the Lord and he worshiped God with everything. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning. Amen. It is time. Amen. To take away, whether it be spiritually or whatever it might be, the apparel of death. Amen. And defeat and destruction. And it is time to come to the house of the Lord and to worship Him with everything that is within us. And I wish you would do that right now this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He changed from mourning to worship. Amen. The Bible said that he would give us a spirit of praise. Amen. For the garment of heaviness. I'm here to tell you today, don't be defeated in this hour where we are surrounded with death and destruction. Amen. But praise him. Amen. Don't let coronavirus determine our praise and our worship. Yes, it's been deadly. Yes, it's been catastrophic. Amen. But I am going to change from an outlook of death and destruction and morbidity. And I'm going to go to the house of the Lord and I'm going to praise and worship Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been surrounded, amen, to an oppressive state. Amen. About 11 weeks ago, I shut off the media. Let me say that again. About 11 weeks ago, I shut off the media. Amen. Because all it is doing, amen, is full of negativity, depressing statistics. Amen. Images that I don't want to see. And I made my mind up that while I'm concerned and I'm prayerful and I'm conscious, you can see how conscious Pastor is today, how we've established things for you to come and worship safely. I'm not being flippant about it. But I made my mind up that I wasn't going to sit around in a garment of mourning and death and destruction and let this thing eat us up and overtake us. Amen. We changed our garment 11 weeks ago and we said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The second garment change that I want to speak to you about comes from Job. Amen. We focus a lot on Job and his wife. In the early portions of the book of Job. Amen. And I want to ask you a question. <laughs> uh, you don't have to raise your hand. But just in your own mind answer this. How many times have we read the entire book of Job. And really concentrated on the final few chapters of Job. Amen. Because Job begins to speak to God. You hear me. Yeah. Job begins to speak to God. A man full of frustration. A man full of sickness. A man that lost everything. He was stripped down to nothing. And the frustrations begin to boil over when God uh, shows up. Uh, uh, God shows up and, and Job just unmasks himself. And he just goes bare knuckle with God. Now, I wouldn't recommend that. But Job did. And it's a shining example for you and I today that we can have a conversation with God about the hard things in our life. Amen. That we can, even though he is sovereign. And at the end of the day, I'm going to say, thy will be done. But I can still say, why, God? I can still say, why me, God? I can still say, why my family, God? Come on. Come on. 
Amen. I want to assure you this morning, the Bible said he will not put more on us than we can bear. Amen. But I want to tell you what, sometimes that burden, amen, brings us all to a breaking point. Amen. And the why, the why starts flowing. Amen. I tell you what, I'll, I'll be even more transparent. Sometimes I get plumb angry and I try not to get angry at God. But the Bible does say be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. And there's sometimes I got to check my spirit because my why to God. God gets a little intense. Amen. Right. Amen. And sometimes the heaven is brass because God doesn't owe me an answer. Right. You read Job. I'm right on the bark here. And he gets to talking to God. You read the particular 30th chapter of Job. He gets down to verse number 18. And he says this. By the great force of my disease... Is my garment changed? It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He said, what I've went through has changed me. He said, in fact, I've had to put on a garment. How many knows that the Bible said that he was full of boils and he had to sit in sackcloth and ashes and scrape those boils off his body? Amen. I read a little snippet about Job and it said that his skin turned like the hide of an elephant. And he could not find proper apparel to wear because of the condition of his skin. And he said, my disease, amen, what God has allowed has caused me to change my garment. Amen. And it's constricting and it's binding me. I don't know all medically what was going on there, but his skin dried out so bad from the boils and the sackcloth and the ashes and had broken out upon him. Amen. That it felt like he was in, constrained by his own skin. Amen. And he said, my garment, my very garment, speaking of the garment, not just literally that he was wearing, but the garment of his flesh is changing because of the disease. I want you to know, we go through things in life and it's going to change us forever. Amen. We might go through physical things, spiritual things, natural things, and it's going to forever change us. Amen. I want to say this. I am not in the same relationship with Jesus Christ today. Amen. That I was a year ago, uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or when I got the Holy Ghost in 1973. I am a different person. Amen. My relationship with him is different because life has changed me. Amen. And things that have occurred has caused my garment of this flesh to be totally different. Oh, than it was uh, just a short time ago. In fact, 12 weeks ago, I'm a different person, amen, than what I am today, and that affects and changes and alters my relationship with God. You hear your pastor today, the things that we are going through in this life, amen, they are to make us better, not to make us bitter. And what happens within us is more important than what happens to us on the outside. And I challenge you today, don't let the garment of the flesh, Adamaka, bind you so much, uh, amen, that you can at the end of the day say, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to hurry along. The third garment change occurs to Joseph. Joseph has been sent ahead of his family to Egypt. His brothers sold him. And he said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. It preserved our family because you have sent me to Egypt when he is reconnected with them. But we find that Joseph is now in prison because of a lie that was perpetrated upon him. We know that the baker and the butler come to him with dreams. One is restored, one is beheaded. They both promise him that they would re refer him and honor him and have the king remember him. But it doesn't happen. He's wasting away in Pharaoh's jail. And we find that he is now called to the court of Pharaoh. When he is called, the Bible says this. Pharaoh sent Genesis 41, 14, the Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. He shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. He had prison garments on. The third change I'm talking about is deliverance this morning. He had prison garments on. He was known as a prisoner by the attire that he was wearing. But when he was called to the throne room of the king, amen. 
He was called to the throne room of the king. They changed his apparel. Amen. They took off prisoner garments, garments of bondage, garments of sin, garments of shame. Hallelujah. Garments of fear, garments of doubt. And they changed his garment and they put on a garment worthy to go into the presence of the king. I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter where you are at or what God has done for you. Amen. The greatest thing that he has done is he's delivered us all from sin. Amen. He took away the shame, the guilt, the oppression of sin. Amen. We took off uh, filthy garments and put on, amen, a robe of righteousness today so that we can come into the throne room of the king and worship him and honor him and praise him. Amen. I am thankful today that I have been set free from the chains, the shackles of sin. I am thankful that on this Sunday, June the 7th, we are in the presence of the king with robes of righteousness on, with a wedding garment on that has no spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Amen. And we change that garment today. Amen. That's a change worth making. That's a change worth making in our life today is to come out from sin, to come out from darkness into marvelous light, to be separated, amen, to be transformed, transfigured into his image. Amen. That's a change I'll make every day. Aren't you thankful for the salvation of the Lord this morning that changed your life? Hey, listen, we all have a different backstory. Some in this room have been born and raised in an apostolic home. Amen. But you still have a testimony this morning. Some of you, God delivered you from sin. You have a testimony this morning. The bottom line is, is we're all sinners saved by grace. No story greater or less. Amen. Because we've all been purchased and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And that was a great price. Amen. That purchased us to be able to change the garment from being a sinner to being a saint of the Most High God. Put your hands together and magnify the Lord. The fourth thing I want to speak to us about concerning the changing of the garment that David in that Psalms of our text wrote about is doctrine. These slides will be on the screen for you. The first one is Hebrews 13 and 7 says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, this is our candy stick right here. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Powerful. And I'm thankful for that. That's what I've been preaching about this morning. Some things change, but he is never going to change. Amen. And even when he was God on the throne before he was Jesus manifested in the flesh, he never changes. Amen. His roles and offices and as the gift of the Holy Ghost that comes in our life, he's the same. He never changes. What he has had as values and principles from the days of old are going to be for the present time and in the future and even in eternity those principles will stand forever. He is the same. Listen, I'll just say this and I've got to hurry. I'm down to seven or eight minutes left. But I'm here to tell you this, that if God, amen, raised the dead in the Bible and even in the Old Testament, God can raise the dead this morning. If God can provide a widow woman income uh, when she would sell the vessels of oil, God can meet all your financial needs today. I'm here to tell you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And he is not going to prefer one group or era or time over another group, era, or time. Amen. He is the God of all of us through all of eternity. Amen. And he is able to do exactly what he done for them. Amen. And even the stories of our forefathers. Amen. For the future generations, God is obligated that he is no respecter of person this morning. He said that the same yesterday forever. And then verse 9, be carried not, be carried, be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. He connects his sameness. Hear me. God gave me this. If you get nothing else out of this this morning, I want you to take this home. This is what I feel in the Holy Ghost. He connected his sameness. Jesus Christ is the same with be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. His sameness is built on the foundation. He doesn't change doctrinally just because of what's most popular in church culture in 2020. 
He's not going to change his doctrine. You could go to Hebrews 6 and 1 and read the doctrines of Christ. It talks about the infilling of the Holy Ghost, baptism, laying on of hands, the oneness of God. He's not going to change. And we've got to be careful that we're not. Let, let me hurry on and let me show you the next slide. Go, go ahead to that next scripture, Brother Gary, Malachi 3, 6. He said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, even from the days of your fathers. Are ye gone away from what? Mine ordinances. In Malachi, speaking as God, before he's manifested in the flesh, he said, I change not, but you've gone away from, your, from my ordinances. Am I making sense? He said, you changed. You changed. And that's why in Hebrews he tells us that his sameness, the unchangeable God that we serve, is connected to standing on firm doctrine this morning. In Malachi, he said, I change not, but you've gone away. He said, you've gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. The first step, amen, is for us to go back to God, not for him to come to us. He said, if you come back to me, then I'll come back to you. Amen. And so what am I trying to say this morning? I am trying to tell you this very carefully. Amen. That in the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of change that has permeated church culture, amen, if God is to be the same and we want him to be the same, then my friend, we can't move off of and change the garment of doctrine this morning and make it fit a modern society and a post-modern society movement and a hedonistic society. Amen. And what am I saying? What he said in the beginning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Amen. Those foundational doctrines have not changed, they cannot change, and they will not change at the Pentecostal Detroit. Amen. We're going to stand and not, that's one change we're going to fight against. Amen. It's blending in. Amen. And becoming relevant culturally in the church world. Because we have forsaken the ordinances. I, I don't want God to turn his back on me. Amen. And so we've got to stay. Amen. We've got to stand very strong. I don't have time to finish this message this morning. Amen. I got a few more things I wanted to say. But I'm going to close right there. Just planting our flag on doctrine. Listen. We're an apostolic church. But we can't just be an apostolic church and thump our chest and have it in our words only. But in our action and in our deeds, we must be apostolic as well. Amen. And if we believe in the separation of sexes, amen, the separation of lifestyle, amen, the separation of doctrine, amen, then we've got to plant that flag and not just say it, but we've got to do it as well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to, I want to, uh, what a slide nine, that last scripture slide. I don't know if I, I might have messed my notes up. Oh, I didn't mess my notes up. Good. Stand with me. I'm done. Here's our protocol. We're using the center aisle for one-way traffic. That goes this way. We're using the outer aisles for exit traffic. We're not gathering at the altar. We're not laying hands on people. Your altar's right where you're at right now. We're going to pray. And then we'll, our dismissal protocol will be the last rows first. They'll step to the outer aisle and go out. And we'll work our way front so that we eliminate, uh, keep our social distancing to a minimum. Uh, and I will give you the instruction. But my last scripture, as we are at 1115, is this. Amen. When I think of God being consistent, right? Jehovah Shammah. This is Ezekiel, the 48th chapter. is tremendous talking about the future temple. Amen. New Jerusalem. And when I think of consistency, the word there came to my mind. And Ezekiel said this about that place we're going. He said, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. It's one of the seven names of Jehovah of the Old Testament. There. Planted. Immovable. Never changing. He is there. And I want you to know today, the Lord until we are with him for eternity, take this with you. The Lord is there. He is there right by your side. He is never going to leave you nor forsake you. He is never going to change. Amen. Never going to change. I love the Lord today. We're going to pray right where you're at. That's your altar today. Amen. Just lift your hands up as we close this service today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We glorify you. We praise you. 
What a mighty God you are. We're thankful for those that joined us this morning in this 1030 service. We thank you for your presence that we have felt. Lord God, now as we come to a close today, we pray that you'll go with us, God. We know that you don't change, and we thank you for that today. Now, Heavenly Father, as we depart from this place, let there be a blessing fall upon your people. Let them feel the power and the glory of God. This day going forward until we gather again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Uh, if you want to sit down or just remain standing, but uh, we already got folks exiting the last rows. We're going to move forward. Just head out the door. Amen. God bless you. We love all of you. And we will see you next Sunday. Same procedures. Same procedure, same plan. And to those that are on screen with us, we're going to close you out today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning.